There's another Ohio politician who is giving 2020 candidacy a real shot. If elected, Congressman Tim Ryan will become the first sitting member of the House of Representatives elected president since another Ohio politician, James Garfield, did it way back in 1880. With me now is Congressman Tim Ryan, 2020 Democratic presidential candidate. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me. Um, of all the people in the United States, age 35 or above, who are natural born citizens, <laughs> why should you, Tim Ryan, be president of the United States? Uh, well, first and foremost, I can win. I can rebuild that blue wall, the Western PA, Ohio, you just mentioned Michigan, Wisconsin. But more than that, I think I understand the need of economic, uh, the economic needs of people in communities like the one I represent. And that, to me, is the essential issue in our country today the economic inequality, the economic in, uh, divide that we have, and the fact that people are just sick of trying to get by. They want to thrive, not just survive, and that's what I'm going to bring to the White House. Um, when you say you understand uh, sort of the, 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 you can win, right? You can mm -hmm. rebuild the blue wall. Mm -hmm. Could you win statewide in Ohio? Could yes. Tim Ryan still win? Yeah. Then why not o do that? O Ohio goes right back on the map. No, I'm saying why not run for statewide office? Why go from running for House of Rep uh, oh, Representatives? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Well, I've been in Congress. This is my 17th year. I've been working on these federal issues. They're very important to me. I think uh, the, the issues around our foreign policy, our engagement in the world, critically important. Trade deals have been a train wreck for communities like mine, hollowed us out. So I, don't, I think if you don't get those macroeconomic policies straight around trade, around taxes, around really federal investments, around the new technologies, we've been trying to piece it together in communities like Youngstown and a bunch of others around the United States. But if you don't have the force of the federal government behind initiatives to win the future, each community in each state is going to struggle. Um, when you think about um, where the country is headed under Donald Trump, mm -hmm. what do you think the worst thing that is, he has done as president is? I think we're, I mean, obviously the example he sets, that will go when he goes. That example will, have, will hit the reset button. The economic failures, his failure to really address the structural changes of our economy are going to last for a long time because China is breathing down our throats. So he divided the country further than we were already divided. A divided country is a weak country, and it, it's preventing us from really dealing with this, these e challenges. China's coming after us. They have 40% of the electric vehicle market. They have 60% of the solar panel market. They're building bases in Africa, islands in the South China Sea. They're building a railroad from northeast China to Rotterdam. But isn't that just a zero-sum version of a, of a worldview the president himself also shares, right? I mean, if you look at the president on trade, things like NAFTA or China, right? His view is this very kind of mercantilist zero-sum view. If Canada and Mexico are doing well, we're getting screwed. If China's doing well, we're doing, getting screwed. And what I'm hearing from you is it is sort of a zero-sum between us and China, but it can it be the, 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 the case that people prosper together, that different countries prosper together? Totally. If the United States really has an industrial policy, if the United States is saying, if the president of the United States is sitting down saying, how do we dominate the electric vehicle market? China has 40% now. How do we win that? How do we make those cars in the United States, the batteries, the charging stations? How do we make solar panels in the United States? Let's compete. Let's go. I'm ready to have a competition with China. The problem now is China has a 10-year plan, 20-year plan, 50-year plan, 100-year plan. We live in a 24-hour news cycle, and we're getting our clocks clean. Well, but they're also, they're also not a democracy. They're, the, 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 the Chinese All, Communist Party knows a thing or two about planning. Uh, look, it's it, a it, tough it, thing to replicate. Yeah, I, they, got, they, they do have <laughs> inherent advantages. But they don't have the creativity, the ingenuity, the innovation, the kind of wherewithal we do to create a new economy. We have the creative edge over China. Problem is we're not tapping into it because we're not invested in education. We're not invested in research. We don't have a plan around some of these newer technologies. These technologies are growing at 25, 30 percent a year. You take additive manufacturing, 3D printing, three to five million jobs in the next 10 years. Let's dominate it. So you don't get to pick your opponent. Right. So our opponent is China, and they have their advantages. We have ours. Problem is, we're not tapping into ours. What would be if you were elected president of the United States, and mm -hmm. let's say through uh, somewhat uh, uh, an amazing political uh, events, you had both the House <laughs> and the a Senate that were uh, uh, Democratic majorities? Mm -hmm. What would be your first piece of legislation you would move? Your first domestic policy priority? Create an industrial policy in the United States. 
really focus on how we dominate these industries. How what do we, does that look like legislatively? Like you mean like a, a sort of infrastructure bill, a sort of research and funding bill? I think, I think it's got to be all of them. Of course, you got to do infrastructure, uh, roads, bridges, kind of traditional stuff. We've got to make sure we have the high-speed internet. China, once again, killing us on 5G. Mm -hmm. We're stuck in 4G. This is all part of an industrial policy. Pick two or three of these industries that we say we want to dominate. Sit down with the car companies, sit down with the Department of Energy, Department of Defense, National Science Foundation, small business. How do you get early stage capital into some of these innovations? You're talking real happen. industrial policy. I'm like talking, government, look, business man. get together, like we're gonna plan on these, we're gonna, we're gonna strategically put our chips behind these enterprises in these areas. Yeah, that, I mean, how do, you, how, how do we go? I'm not yeah. saying it's wrong. No, I, this, I mean, how'd you, how do you go to the moon? Right. right. You like, OK. And then all these technologies spin out of that. Who knows what what batteries are going to come? And I'm not saying it should be a centralized plan. I'm saying bring in our free enterprise system. That's our comparative advantage to help us scale this up. And it should all a lot of it should be focused around decarbonizing the United States and making sure we are leading the world in reversing climate change, using our government, using our education, workforce and free enterprise system. That Is that something happen. that the voters in your congressional district can get behind decarbonizing the United States? Jobs, the jobs that come the with The jobs it. they can get behind. Yeah, well, we, we talk about climate. We need right. to be talking about jobs. Right. This Isn't is that the, the conceit of the Green New Deal is to do that, right? Well, yeah, I, maybe, yeah. I mean, the guaranteed jobs and that other right. piece. But I'm saying wind's growing at 25, 30% a year. Solar's growing at 25, 30% a year. Additive's adding three to five in new jobs in the next 10 years. We're going to make we're going to go from making 1 to 2 million electric vehicles in the United States to 30 million somewhere in the world. Someone's going to make those. Right. I want those made in the United States. And here's the key too, Chris, we have to do this. The tax code, the incentives, the investments, we have to drive them to distressed communities, to communities of color, old coal, old steel, old auto, old rubber communities that have been left behind in the deep south. We got to spread the wealth here. Eighty percent of venture capital today goes to three states, California, New York, Massachusetts. Yep. Nine percent goes to women, two, less than two percent go to people of color. We've got to spread this out. Everybody wants a piece of the action here and cut these workers in on the deal. Spread the wealth. And uh, an intentional or unintentional Huey, Huey Long reference. <laughs> Congressman Tim Ryan, Democratic presidential Thanks. candidate. Thank you for making time. Come Thanks back. Thanks for having me.